Hi, everybody. If you were able to join us for our Zoom scavenger hunt yesterday, I hope you had a lot of fun. If you weren't able to join us, that's okay. We're going to work with shapes some more today. And the first thing we're going to do is a math warm up. So you're going to need your math notebook. And then we'll be doing, I'm going to be teaching you about composing shapes. And then we'll be working in our math journals a little bit. So the things you need today are math notebook, math journal, pencil, and I'm going to share my screen so you can see the math warm-up for today. Today's math warm-up might be a little bit easier if you use the number grid that's in the back of your math journal. You might be able to do these problems without the number grid, but it's always helpful to have a tool nearby. So we are solving word problems today, story problems, and let me read them to you and then you can answer them in your notebook. So this one says, the peach tree has 17 blossoms on it. The apple tree has eight blossoms. How many blossoms are there in all? The peach tree has 17 blossoms. The apple tree has eight blossoms. How many blossoms are there in all? Solve that and write it down in your math notebook. The next story problem says, Hannah had 84 paper clips in her bag. She dropped 30 of them. How many paper clips are left? So this is where a number grid might come in a little bit handy. Hannah had 84 paper clips. She dropped 30 of them. That means some of them went away. How many paper clips are left? Please solve this in your math notebook and write down the answer. All right, this one says, there were 21 black cars on the parking lot. There were also 15 red cars. How many black and red cars were there in all? There were 21 black cars. There were 15 red cars. How many black and red cars were there in all? Okay, now for our math message today, this is where we're going to solve a little problem together. Um, I'm going to read you the story problem and then show you an example. You'll actually get to respond to this in Seesaw, and you'll see what I mean after we're done. But I'll read this to you. It says, Dave needs a hexagon to finish a pattern block puzzle. He has no hexagon blocks left. What other blocks can Dave use to make a hexagon? Then it says, use your pattern block template to draw the blocks Dave could use. Well, you do not have a pattern block template at home, so we're going to use the resources that we have. So remember, it says that Dave needs a hexagon to finish a puzzle. He has no hexagon blocks left, so we're going to try to figure out what other blocks he could use. Okay, so here is the puzzle that maybe Dave was doing, and you can see right in the center of that flower, he needs a hexagon shape to go in there, but we're going to pretend that he doesn't have any more hexagons left. So he has to come up with another shape to put in the center. Now, it might not be exactly the right color to go in the middle of a flower, but that's okay. We're not really worried about... Uh, the color of this shape right now. We just want the right shape. I have a bunch of shapes over here. These are all, these are called pattern blocks, and these are all shapes that we have in our classroom and you have used before. Maybe you remember on like the 100th day of school, we pulled all these out and you were building all kinds of different shapes with 100 pattern blocks. Or um, we've done different math centers and things with these pattern blocks, and I'm sure you also use them in kindergarten. Could you combine 
one or two or three or four of these shapes to make a hexagon for this flower. I'm going to quickly show you my example of how you can make a hexagon and then you get to respond to this in Seesaw. I have another version of this same flower and you're going to be able to add your own hexagon shape in the center. I have the hexagons covered by this um, number grid over here, but I'm going to get rid of that. And here you can see an, a regular hexagon that would fit very nicely in the middle if I just turned it a little bit. But we know that Dave does not have any hexagons left, so we have to make our own. So here are some examples I created. You could probably come up with more too. I put two trapezoids together. That makes a hexagon. I put six triangles together. That makes a hexagon. I also did one triangle, one rhombus, and one trapezoid. That also makes a hexagon. These are called composite shapes. When we take shapes to make new shapes, we combine them together to make a new shape. That's called a composite shape because you're putting them together. Now today in Seesaw, you are actually going to be making your own composite shapes after you do that flower hexagon activity that I just showed you. The way you're going to be making composite shapes is that you are going to get five squares. I'm going to show you the example on my screen here in just a second, but for now I drew a picture of um, what the five squares could make. So you're going to get five little orange squares and your job will be to put them together so that it makes a new shape. You're going to do this three times, so three chances to make a new shape, but actually there are 12 different ways to put together five squares to make a shape. Okay, here's one example. This kind of looks like the letter L, doesn't it? It's got one, two, three, four, five squares. Those are put together. They're lined up so that it's not just their corners touching. It's not just part of their sides touching. The whole side lines up with the whole side of the next block and it makes an L shape. The thing I wanna warn you about is that when you go to make these shapes, you might get so excited and make one that looks like this and then make one that looks like this and say, oh, look, they're two different shapes. But they're not really, are they? These are the exact same shape. It's just turned a different way. That won't count as an answer. It needs to be a completely different shape. Here's something else I want to warn you about. Like I said, when the corners are the only part that's touching, that doesn't count. So this would be a non-example. This is not going to count for a shape using your five squares. Again, this one has some of the sides touching, like part of the side is touching a part of another block's side. That doesn't count. They need to be fully lined up. The entire edge of one has to touch the entire edge of another one. You are composing shapes. Like we said a minute ago with that flower activity, when we create new shapes, out of other shapes. We call those composite shapes. To make a composite shape, you compose a shape. So you are composing shapes when you are putting these five squares together to make a new shape. Let me show you in Seesaw what this is actually going to look like. To respond in Seesaw today, you're going to see this flower shape first, and it says, what shape could you use in the middle besides a hexagon? Try as many options as you want. Now, I have locked these shapes so that you aren't moving them around. Please don't unlock them because that's not going to help you get this job done. What you do want to do is you go to the three dots over here, click on shapes, and then obviously it will give you all of these shape choices. You can use whatever you want 
to create a hexagon that can go in the center here. If you would like to add other things around the flower, that's fine. Just don't unlock the um, flower shape. Now the next slide says make a shape using these five squares. The sides of the square must touch and line up. This is explained in the video. So that's what I just explained to you um, a second ago. So you're gonna take these five squares and make sure that they, the sides line up just like this. You're gonna make whatever shape you want. Um, also, we don't want the shapes kind of blocking each other, like that wouldn't count <laughs> for uh, uh, an answer because the shapes are on top of each other. We want just the edges to touch and then you can make whatever shape you want. But when you go to the next slide, make sure it's a different shape that you make with these five squares. And when you go to the last slide, make sure it's another different shape that you make. Like I said, there are actually only 12 different shapes you can make with these five squares. So it'll be interesting to see what you come up with. Um, and then for this last slide, it says post a photo of math boxes, page 164 here. So obviously you'll do those math boxes and post it there. Let me show you how to do those math boxes. If you want to do them on your own, then you can stop the video here and go ahead and do them on your own and post your picture. If you want me to read them to you, then keep watching this video. For math boxes today, you're going to turn to page 164 in the math journal, page 164. We're going to find the math boxes. And number one says, draw a polygon with four vertices. How many sides does it have? Well, a polygon is a shape that has straight sides, it has corners, so it's closed all the way around, and um, it can have any number of sides when it's a polygon, but here we're, they're asking us to draw a polygon with four vertices, that's four corners. So they're not necessarily asking you to draw a square or a rectangle, but it does need to have four corners or four vertices. Then they're asking how many sides does it have? Okay, write that down. Number two says choose a unit. Pencils, paper clips, journals. How long is your leg? Be sure to write the unit. So you're gonna use either pencils, which might be the easiest thing that you have around your house, or paper clips, or your math journal. And you're going to tell how long is your leg. So make sure you write down the number on this line, but also write down what you used to measure. Number three says draw and solve. Kaylee has lost 12 teeth. Wyatt has lost six teeth. How many more teeth has Wyatt lost than, sorry, how many more teeth has Kaylee lost than Wyatt? Now remember, you are not adding these numbers together. This is not 12 plus 6. That will not give you your answer. Kaylee lost 12 teeth. She lost more than Wyatt. Wyatt lost 6 teeth. How many more teeth has Kaylee lost? It says to draw a picture. Remember, we can draw a picture down here in this blank space, or really, since we've already done this page, you could draw a picture over here too. Um, but remember, a lot of times when we draw pictures for this kind of problem, we'll draw a line of circles, 12 circles, and a line of six circles, and then match up the ones that are the same. Whatever's left over is your answer. You could also use addition or subtraction to solve this problem. Number four says subtract. So we have some subtraction problems here. Then it says write an addition fact you could use to solve 16 minus 8. That is using think addition to solve subtraction. If I'm trying to solve 16 minus 8, 
I know that 16 is the big number, the DAG number. If I'm going to use addition to solve that problem, I have to put the DAG number after the equal sign. So let me show you what that looks like. Now, if you know your doubles, maybe this will be really easy for you. But you're trying to solve the problem 8 plus something equals 16. The subtraction problem was 16 minus 8. We take the biggest number, put it after the equal sign, and then we know that 8 plus something equals 16. You have to figure out what that something is, and you're going to write the whole addition fact right here on this line. Number 5 says, use base 10 blocks to help you. Now, you don't have base 10 blocks at your house, so you can always draw them or just imagine them if you don't want to draw them. It says, how is exchanging 10 tens for 100 like exchanging 10 ones for 110? You're going to have to think about this one. You don't necessarily need to have the base 10 blocks in front of you to solve this. So like I said, you can draw them on here if you want, or you can just think about the answer. If we have 10 longs, that's the same thing as one flat or one 100. If we have, um, and there's asking, how is that the same as exchanging 10 ones for 110. So if you have 10 cubes, that's the same as one long, right? So in both cases, you're exchanging 10 of something for one of something. I'll let you figure out the rest. We're trying to figure out how those two exchanges are similar. All right, after you're done with page 164, make sure you post a picture of it in Seesaw. Make sure you post a response to all those other slides that are on there too. And have fun making those different shapes with those five squares. I'll see you tomorrow.